Hello everyone and welcome back to the Oxford Vapors YouTube channel. I'm Taylor and today we're going to be going through a few common problems that all vapors encounter at some point or another. This is just going to be a short list of different little niggles and problems that vapors encounter and hopefully I can help you fix them. So first up, we've all been there at some point or another. You go to take a puff of your vape and just when you don't want it to, it spits boiling hot liquid straight onto your tongue and burns your lip or your tongue or whatever. Now, unfortunately, this is likely to impact most vapors at some point or another. This is because most coils inside vapes work in a similar way, even if they're different designs. So what causes the spitting is an amount of juice that is sat in the bottom of the coil that when, when heat is presented by firing the device, it will then make the liquid pop and therefore shooting out onto your lip or your tongue. There's a few different things that can cause this. Um, it can be caused by changes in temperature. So especially in hot weather, uh, like we're having at the time of filming actually, when a liquid is exposed to heat, it actually becomes thinner and therefore more watery and therefore easier to flow through the cotton of the coil and either leak out or sit in the bottom of the coil and wait to be shot out onto your tongue. But it is a very easy fix. The way to do it is to get a bit of tissue, hold it over the end of your device and then flick the device down to the floor. And this will get rid of any juice that is sat in the bottom of the coil and therefore, if it's not there, it can't burn your tongue. Now, another problem that a lot of people encounter is the charging port of their device or the battery itself not working how it used to. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to tell you how to fix it, but I can tell you how to prevent this from happening. So first of all, if your vape uses a micro USB, which is the older style, most have now moved on to type C, but if it uses the micro USB, be sure that you are pushing the charger in the correct way round, because unlike USB type C, micro USB will only fit in one way. If you then try and force it in the wrong way, you're likely to break the port. Another thing to look out for is make sure that the amp output of the wall plug you are using is suitable for the device you're using. This is one that people fall into the trap of a lot. You know, they think, oh, I'll just, I'll just put it on my iPhone charger, it'll be fine, it'll charge up quicker. Unfortunately, vapes don't have the technology inside them in order to deal with such a high volume of charging. On the whole, vapes range from 0.5 amps to two amps. So be sure to check the front of a plug, look for the output, it will then say a voltage equals an ampage make sure that that matches up to what it says in your user manual. If you don't, you are likely to degrade the battery at a very accelerated rate or even break your charging port and then your vape's as good as dead. Another tip is not just for vapes really, but any electronic devices, don't charge them overnight. The likelihood is that the charging period for your vape is only between two and five hours. The average person is asleep for longer than that. And I don't imagine the first thing you're gonna do in the morning is unplug your vape. So if you leave it on charge for an excessive amount of time, it will overcharge the batteries and degrade them, meaning that they don't last as long. And one little side note from a consumer perspective, if you walk into your vape shop with a broken charging port, 99 times out of 100, it's gonna be put down to user error. It's very rare that it can be put down to a manufacturing fault. And so any warranty or guarantee that you had will be voided because unfortunately it was likely the customer that caused it. So taking these tips and tricks on board will help you maintain your warranty and your vape. We have a lot of customers ask, why is my coil burning out so quickly? And I think what sometimes they don't realize is how many answers to that question there can be. It can be down to a number of things. It can be as simple as a manufacturing error with the coil, right down to user error. 
and everything in between. So I'm gonna go through a small list of different common problems that we encounter and how to either fix them or not have them happen. The first thing that I would recommend is make sure you prime your coil properly. Now priming properly means that the cotton that is contained within your coil is completely soaked and left to soak before you use it. The way to do this is almost to paint on some e-liquid to all the exposed cotton that you can see in your coil. So that includes the inside and the outside. I know it can be tricky to get the inside. If you're struggling, put three drops down the top hold the coil on its side and give it a spin very slowly so that the juice doesn't just drop out the bottom. Once you've done that, put the coil in the vape, fill up your tank, pod, whatever you may have, and leave it for 10 minutes. Then you can be sure that that coil is soaked and you won't have any dry cotton left, which will burn upon firing the vape. The second is one I mentioned earlier. Try and keep your vape out of excessive temperatures. So excessive heat and excessive cold. The reason is that it changes the viscosity of your juice. So in heat, it becomes thinner, as I said earlier, and the reverse is true also. So in cold, it becomes thicker. So if you're using your vape in a very cold environment, your juice will become thicker and therefore harder for the coil to soak in juice. So you'll be using your coil as normal, firing and vaping on your vape, and it won't be able to replenish the juice within the coil quickly enough and therefore will dry out and therefore burn out. So where possible, try to keep your vape at a normal room temperature and you won't encounter these problems. One other one is a little bit of a tricky subject because it's don't expect too long from your coil. So on the whole, coils are rated to last between a few days to a couple of weeks. Now, we are fully aware that a lot of people get a lot longer than that out of your coil, but you shouldn't expect to get longer. They are rated for that amount of time for a reason. That's how long they're expected to last. Even if out of a full pack, you get four that last three weeks. If that last one in the pack only lasts five days, unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do because that's what the coils are rated for. We understand that it can be frustrating, but there's a reason why the manufacturers themselves rate the coils for a certain amount of time. Now, lastly on this point, if your coil is not reading, i.e. it comes up with check atomizer or something to the same effect, that can either mean your coil is done for and you need to change it, or it could be that it's not installed correctly. So just check over, make sure that everything is in place, tightened up, and make sure that the coil is inserted and installed correctly. Now this has happened to a lot of us as well. We come to use our vape and realize it's covered in liquid and can't work out why. Well, hopefully I can maybe point you towards one of the reasons why it may be. It can be down to something as simple as user error. You could have not tightened up your tank properly. You could have accidentally fired your vape in your pocket and therefore it would leak out. But it can be things like a defect in the tank, either manufacturer or over wear and tear over time but your device leaking is never a good thing. If your vape is an internal vape and liquid gets onto the inside and onto the chip and the board and short circuits it, that's it, it's done. There's nothing we can really do to fix it once the, the liquid damage has already been done. And the same is true for external batteries. If the liquid makes its way and finds the batteries, it can get underneath the wrap. And if we see this when we're looking at your batteries, we will recommend that you stop using them. If you find that your vape has been leaking, whether a small amount or a large amount, there's a few things to look for. The first is cracks in your glass. Even little tiny hairline cracks will cause the tank to leak. And the same is true about the seals. Normally there's one on the top and one on the bottom of your glass. They could be located elsewhere for pod users, etc. But making sure that they're fully intact and there is no little nicks in them uh, will mean that the tank is airtight and therefore can't really leak. Also make sure that your coil is installed correctly because again if it isn't this will cause the tank to not be airtight and therefore the juice will leak and also make sure that your tank is assembled correctly make sure everything's tightened up. If you do all of this and it still leaks unfortunately something's wrong with your tank and or coil and in that case they may need to be replaced.
And lastly, something I do even to this day for the longest time on my daily, I thought the screen was broken. It turns out I'd accidentally turned on stealth mode. It's accidentally changing your settings. Now, this isn't always a problem. It's not always going to, you know, burn your coils out or ruin anything. It's it can just be a little bit of an inconvenience. But in some circumstances, it can be quite detrimental to your coil or vape. Obviously, most coils nowadays are designed to run on a variable wattage. That's why they give you a recommended wattage from one wattage to another, is because that is the variations of the coil in terms of wattage. So by being designed to run on wattage, they don't, they're don't—they not really designed to run on voltage, or a bypass, or any other settings that your vape may have. Changing the settings on your vape is different from device to device. It's never really the same on two. So what I would try is either look in your user manual. If you no longer have your user manual, it can be a bit tricky, but it's normally one of a few things. Normally it involves the up and down buttons on the bottom here and the fire button. Some combination of either two at the same time or three or clicking things three, three times normally will give you access to a menu and therefore access to your settings so you can turn it back to variable wattage. In exceptional circumstances, like if you're using an, an RDA or an RTA, sometimes other settings will work, such as a bypass mode or something like that. But on the whole, variable wattage is what you want to be on and therefore change the setting back to that. There's a bit of a longer video today. Hopefully though, if you've watched to the end, that these little tips and tricks will help you maintain your vape and solve any of the little problems that you may encounter when using it. But I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. I've been Taylor, this is Oxford Vapors, and we'll see you very soon.